There's a couple there. One's quite close. This is Blackthorn in Bloom, where you can uh, pick slows in the winter time, then about November. October, November in England or the UK. I'm not sure what the season is in uh, other parts of the world. It's quite nice, isn't it, in, uh, in Bloom, Blackthorn. Also, if we just go a bit further on, you can see these thorns. They'll do you some damage as well. You know, look at the size of that one there. You know about that if you walk into it. About there, a big hazel. We have some yellow birch. Not far from it, we've got some uh, silver birch. Oh no, it's not. That's yellow birch as well. Little sign of chaga. You never know, we might get lucky. West. So guys, after a few hours travelling and uh, an hour and a half walking, we're back at camp and uh, for part two. So we've got, uh, I've got a few jobs to get on with. One, I've got to clear away the brush because uh, it's been windy since we were last here, me and my mate L, and um, there's been a, a lot of uh, uh, foliage, let me say, a lot of foliage, and a bit of foliage, come away from the, uh, come away badge. Uh, so I've got to <coughs> make sure I drink enough water today. Uh, it's quite warm um, at the moment, but it's gonna be cold, cold tonight. We're expecting it to go down to around about minus three, minus four, um, as we have got a easterly uh, wind coming over from um, Siberia, Scandinavia, and so forth. So it's going to be a cold one tonight. Um, but me and Badgie will be should be fine. Um, I've brought with me my Arctic sleeping bag, just the outer layer. I've got Badgie as a not water bottle. And obviously I'm going to have a fire going as well. Yeah, so I'm going to get on with it now, guys. Get myself sorted. This side of the hammock is higher than this side. This is where my head's going to be. If this is where my head was going to be, my legs are here, I'll have an uncomfortable sleep as uh, my legs are elevated. So all the blood moves down to your, uh, your noggin. We don't want that, do we? So I want to move this out of the way because the fire's there. I'm going to use this as a bit of a seat. 
for later on. It's hefty. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a funny bit. Start get, collecting some of the wood now and some of these babies. Look at that. Let's have a look at these. Let's have a look, we'll see what's inside. And what you can do with these, you see all the resin inside there. If you find yourself a decent stick, stick, split it. You can fit this inside with a bit of resin, pour a bit of resin over it, uh, a bit of pine pitch. This will go for a good 20 minutes. So if you want to make yourself a bit of a candle, these are perfect. I brought with me my Ultra Force classic axe. I'm going to use this now to knock some of the stakes in that we uh, we left from when we were camping here last. How are these in? One there. One there, maybe one in the middle, for good measure. What are you doing, boy? What are you doing? Let's just lean this back a little bit. Yeah, that should be suffice. It's leaning back that so. I ain't going nowhere. There's a couple of things that I need to do, what I've got to make tonight. Um, one of them is a spoon. And uh, considering Scott's Pine is the hardest, I think. I think it is the hardest of the, uh, of the uh, soft woods, the pines. So uh, that should make a good spoon for sure. Uh, but I've also got a little project that I'm doing later on as far as the tinderbox is concerned. So. Um, well, it could be a tinderbox, it could be used for many things, but I need a decent piece of uh, timber to make a stop uh, or a lid or something like that. So let's get out there and find a decent specimen. So I'm going to harvest a few uh, limbs from this fallen Scots pine and uh, use it for my little projects, but I'm also going to use it for the fire. Yeah, that's quality of that. That's perfect. Slowly losing the plot. Wow. How am I doing there? Am I catching the sun? Am I going? all red on you. I might have to stick me out on it a bit, which is uh, it's cooling down now. I can feel that wind. That wind is cool. But uh, yeah. Oi! It's all fun and games, isn't it? Fun and games, eh? Can you see camp over yonder? Over yonder there. Floating away that tarp. How peaceful and serene is it? That's no good. Punk wood and it's wet inside. You see, that's no good for burning that, mate. No good at all. Let's try this out. That's better. Not too bad, not too bad. Ah. Let's get chopping. Size it up in the middle.
Yeah, baby. This looks like it's going to be a bit of trouble. Let's have a go. Keep your legs apart. No problemo. Nice one. The bark, this holds in or retains moisture. So the outside's going to be a little bit damp as you can see. But um, we've got an hour or so, maybe two hours of uh, warmth still around on the ground. So this, uh, I'll leave it to dry out a little bit, but it should be fine. It's all, all round here, it's all dry. All dry on the inside and that's what matters. Size it up. As you can see it's dry. A bit punky in the middle actually. But uh, it's dry. It'll do. Willow herb. Or um, I think the Americans call them fire sticks. Strip the stems. It's all last year's crop, and uh, it's all nice and fluffy stuff. So we'll get a fire going later on with this. Now that should go up fairly rapid because it's dry nice and dry come on right the hat's on guys I'm going to take you on a little wonder now because there is a mystery and the mystery is for the mystery item we're going to go see if we can find some but I want a decent piece. There was a massive piece that I saw. It was quite a distance away though. So I'm, out, I'm looking to see if there's anything nearby, because that would be helpful. It means I don't have to walk too far from camp. Some more man's beard there, as you can see. Be a nice dry piece there. I'll take that for a piece of tinder. Add to the tinder collection. Ah, uh, we've got some here. Elliot thinks this is lichen trot poo, and I'm pretty sure it's not. I'm gonna have a look around for some more. I saw some decent sized mortals when I was uh, making my way through the forest to camp. But it's like anything, isn't it? You know, when you're looking for it, you can never see it. You can never find it. There's one. This here. Now, guys, if you don't know what that is, I'll give you a clue. Uh, it's something that is regurgitated and as far as I know werewolves do not regurgitate so got two pieces there so there you've got either crows or ravens feathers yeah these specimens here I'm excited because I've got an idea what's going to be inside them but I'm pretty sure that these are pellets from Owls. I'm not pretty sure. I'm damn sure. And that is a bone from something. Or a tooth. <laughs> Elliot might be right. That might be a werewolf tooth. <laughs> These might be. Oh god, there's another one. They might be lichen trot around here. Bones. 
That's from a little morsel. There you go. There's another one. Not quite as big as the one I saw earlier on. That must have been the daddy of all owls. Well, we've not done bad there. This is the interesting thing when you're walking down the forest, guys. Is learning about what is around the habitat. So we've got a couple of bones there, teeth or whatever. They might come in useful later on actually. Now this here, if I'm right, and these are pellets, you might find bones inside here. That's a bone of some sort. Now that's fairly... This is all the fur you see from from the mouse. Sometimes you find little bones in them. Identifiable. Not as far as I'm concerned. There may be more um, maybe experts out there who can do a better identification, but nah, I can't. I have no idea. Now, there's nothing exciting really, is there? But this is all mouse fur as far as I'm aware. Anyway, guys, if you know any different or anything new about this, let me know. And as far as these things are concerned, your guess is as good as mine. I think they're bones from a little marsupial. Or possibly teeth. You alright, Madge? Not easy with one hand. Not easy at all. All the fine stuff is what you want. I wonder if we're going to have anything like we had when I was here with Elliot where the crows come in to roost have a huge debate sound off like they've got a pair look at all this here tons of lichen Is it going around this side? Not quite as much. So that's an indication of north and south. And you've got the sun over there, it's just that'll be falling. It'll fall round about yonder where the camp is. It'll fall down there. So that's the west and rises in the east. So the sun's going to go down there in the west. That means that this is the south, south facing. So where the lichen is, it's a good indication of uh, your north and south directions. So north, it's where there's no lichen, or hardly any. South, there's loads of lichen. I hope that makes sense to you guys. It's nice and quiet at the moment, but them, them crows are going to come in to roost very, very soon. And when they do, there's going to be tons of noise. Tons and tons of action. Lots of jibber jabber. Lots of conversation. Lots of debate. I wonder what they're debating about. Anything to do with Brexit, do you think? Or do you think they'll be talking about the Mueller report? Hmm. You decide. We don't need no politics out here. All we need is serenity. Don't we, Badge?
bit of serenity. Let's get this fire going, eh? Let's get some curls going. Snap them off like that. See how this works. See how quick that was. That goes up a tree, doesn't it? That goes up a tree. Let's get all the twigs on. Up here, Larry. That'll be coming shortly. But anything that you've got left over. This can all go into storage. Cack handed man, cack handed. Put them chips on on. Bit of everything. Full assortment. I think we can safely say we got a fire. Happy days. As you can see there, the owl. Then we have a fire, campfire. And here we have a waterfall. And this was the most painful part. Can you see the wolf? You probably could see it upside down, maybe. The new tattoo. Use the old uh, Mora Classic. Always be aware when you're doing any cutting that you're not in the you're not cutting towards your knee or out, out like that. Uh, for any of you guys out there who are in the scouts or anything, you've got the death triangle. So you keep your legs apart and you cut away from yourself. And first of all, before you do any of that, if you if you've got company, then with the sheath on the knife, 
you do what's called the blood bubble. So you go around, make sure there's nothing like the badgie in the way. Go on. When you're cutting, that's for the kids out there. For the youngsters out there, just as a bit of a safety precaution, then you, you look at making, finding the shape of your spoon. Always cut it away from yourself. And here I'm using my thumb to put the pressure on. a little v-notch in there stop cut all right much No, stay away, go on over there. The crows are coming in. Sounds like a raven, that actually. Right above us. You can be a bit more refined once you've got the outline of the uh, the spoon. Look at that big fat handle. Not that I need a big fat handle. So we'll thin that down a bit.
Not bad that, is it? Five minutes. I don't know what more Skohansky would, uh, would say about a spoon, how long it should take you. He usually times everything, doesn't he? Got everything. Make a shuttle, a sewing shuttle, like for a net. Novices, I think he's I think he says about 12 minutes for a novice. He can do one in about four. But uh, I don't know what the score is as far as spoons are concerned. This would be the first cut on a past on a practice on a on <laughs> your tri stick, should I say? First cut, you go round like so, and basically you'll come to the centre sooner or later, and you can just snap it off. There you go. So we just round that off, nice and round. And that is your blank in a sense. Needs some ticking off there on this side. Well, that's your blank to work with. When you've got time on your hands, you can just refine it, get it to how you. Uh, you like your spoons to be. <sighs> Stuff to be processed. I've got myself two. Y sticks there, and this is going to be the straight stick. It's going to need uh, some processing that. So I can cook the chops. I'm not, I'm not going to use this because you're best off using green wood. So I'll go and find some green wood. I'll use that on the fire. Green wood's less likely to uh, burn through. There is no hazel or ash around here. Everything's pine and a bit of diseased. I'll take that out, whatever that is. So you're safe to uh, use hazel for cooking. I mean, if you was to really take your time, then you could use all this, dry all that out and use it as cordage. Put the steaks on there, slide them over and then get cooking. So when I said steaks, what I meant to say was, because I've got some steaks, but I've also got these babies, lamb chops. And I think we'll, uh, these will suffice for now. I've got Badgy um, sardines. She's on sardines for dinner or tea, depending on where you're coming from. Ok, 
get that fat all nice and crispy. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. So we've also got another hook knife and this is more for um, bowls I suppose. Let's see how that fares. That can give you more. Let's move these out of the way for a second. As you can see, I twist the knife. a bit more of a spoon shape. The reason why I've kept the handle as long as it is is so I can I can play around and leave a leave the spoon to the uh, to the angles that I want it. Hook knife gives you the depth that you need and helps you start the process off. And this knife, which is got a more of a bend to it, there. Helps you shape it. If you ever watch Doug uh, Linker, he's uh, excellent at this type of stuff. He does all sorts of stuff, creating little gnomes and uh, other characters. But he's fairly. Very, very artistic. In fact, his family are quite artistic. It's quite an artistic family, actually, from what I've seen. But yeah, Doug Linker, check his uh, check his YouTube channel out. He often goes out doing bushcrafting, camping, and and all sorts of stuff. He's not a one-trick pony, he does all sorts of stuff really. You don't know when to stop, do you boy? We're getting there. Them chops are looking like they're getting there as well. So you can make the blank within a few minutes. And then the rest you could spend hours refining it, getting it all sweet and lovely patterns on it and stuff and putting like a corkscrew pattern on it and, and all that beautiful stuff. But I think for now we have achieved our objective.
So there you go guys, that's uh, that's the baby. I think that's not bad considering the uh, time it's taken me. It'll certainly do for Badgie anyway. The previous one that I made, she chewed up. I've never forgiven her for that. But there you go, nice and rustic. That'll do. to prevent all the midges for the fire will uh, help on that score but we should just add another layer of protection on it patch okay. that's beautiful that sunset beautiful Won't be long, Badgie, and then chops are going to be done. You know what I mean? Chops will be done. I think you might have burnt one or two there, Jed. They just might be badges. They're just done right then. Just done to perfection. Mm. I don't know if you uh, can fully appreciate how delish they are. A bit burnt on the bone side, but hey, oh, I'm not eating the bone. The fat is the best bet, I think. Especially when it's slightly charcoal. Mm. Beat snails. If you check out if you check out one of my Hogs, bids, whatever. Them. It's a bit of a snail adventure. Miles better than snails. As the sun sets in the distance, that's very, very awesome. <laughs> very awesome indeed. Like that chop there. Very, very awesome. Very nice. Still juicy. Come on. Don't you just love it? Eh? Don't you just love the beautiful outdoors? Nice and tidy. It's a beautiful sunset, isn't it? Love it. <laughs> Holy moly. That's way too much. 
for me. Yeah, bunch. thing is guys what I've got this new thing I'm gonna try and make I've only got a bit of light left but hopefully you can see that this is a buffalo's horn let me show you in the light it looks like so this is a buffalo horn and what I'm gonna do with it it's all been emptied on the inside there so it's void on the inside what I want to do is build a lid for it there and then use this for tinder. Now from what I know as far as um, let's see if there's oh man a bit light a bit too much light so what I know from the history books that these were used uh, to hold gunpowder but uh, also they used to pierce little holes in them as well and you would carry tinder in it so the tinder would be smoking or smouldering so uh, it could be amadou uh, or anything like that I'm not sure whether the, whether Daldinica concentrica would actually work in this because that burns quite fast but, uh, but apparently what they used to do is the old pioneers they'd put some holes in it, put in the tinder, and it may even have been charcoal, something like that, but it would, it would be smouldering. And whatever material they were using would be inside there, there would be a lid on top, and then when they, ooh, so and then when they're going from one camp to the next, let's say if it's raining or whatever, they've got the tinder inside. There's a multitude of uses for this particular item and what I'm going to tr try and do is put a lid on it and tie, do a bit of carving on it and um, turn it into something that can be used, that you can carry at the side, sort of like, you either sa carry it on your belt like so or with a string you can carry it around your waist or maybe sort of like under your arm or something like that but um, you get the idea don't you now I'm not sure whether I'm gonna have the right type of light to be able to do this the fire's looking good by the way hey. yeah the lights getting a little bit low so I don't think I'll be doing the uh, the little buffalo horn tonight. It's quieting down. Uh, the sun has gone and it's very, very dark on this side of the forest, as you can see, or well, you can't see. So guys, I'm gonna leave it here and um, I'll catch you in the morning where we'll do some other stuff but uh, right now I am bushed it's been a long day it's now nine o'clock and I think it's time to put one's feet up and just take in the quietness that's me guys nicely tucked away snug as a bug in a rug in the old hammock temperatures dropped a little bit so i will see you guys in the morning sweet dreams jelly beans
morning guys well it's time to get back at it um, I've got to find a decent piece of uh, timber that's gonna fit inside there the one that I picked last night or yesterday it's fairly poor so so busy morning I will uh, get cracking with this but, uh, my priority at the moment is to find a piece of timber that's gonna fit in there as a lid so we're going with uh, fireweed or um, willow herb to uh, start the fire so we've got some coals it's all charcoal up here um, so that'll give us a, a fighting chance but I uh, stick to stick to I've got plenty of tinder on me uh, in my tinder pouch here but uh, if there's if there are resources around you then why not use use them or try them at least Yeah, that'll do. Can't get some more wood. I need to sign this up now. Try and do a precision cut. A precision cut. That's about right. That's about right, I think.
Morning has broken like the first dawning. Right. Didn't need the tinder pouch after all. The rotten part, the rotten end. Sometimes I wonder, am I carrying too much gear? What do you think, guys? Got that there. This baby on my back. It's a fair amount, isn't it? 